What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Shoot the Shit Season. I think it was season three. Are we in season three? Or season three. Three. The third. The third. Yeah. Uh, AJ was not able to make it today. Uh, he had to deal with some personal stuff. So uh, me and Vincent said the show must go on. So we uh, we're here today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With your glow stick through your nose. Oh yes. Do you like that? I like that. <laughs> It's like you got like perfect green screen because you're like per you're like you're not like cutting in and out of the of the camera like it's perfect. I know it's it's I'm very surprised because I don't have a green screen. This is strictly the uh, the the video call that makes this possible. Yeah, for real. I mean, that's it's it's perfect. Like how you're not like I said, you're not crackling in and out or anything. Yeah, you like usually I uh, I have a little bit bit of an issue sometimes, and today I don't so. I'm happy. I know. I'm, ro I'm rocking with it. Rocking, yeah. Just roll with it, I guess, right? Um. So, did you watch Super Bowl on Sunday or what? Uh, I was actually at Disneyland. Uh, I was working uh, Monster Jam um, down there in the box office, selling selling people some tickets for the uh, the big old trucks. Uh, and then as soon as that was over, I uh, darted down to Disneyland because I was really hungry and I wanted some clam chowder and a bread bowl. I mean, so, if I had a pass to, I would do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I it I had actually uh, made the reservation and like completely forgot that it was the Super Bowl Sunday, and then we went. Uh, Ash and I went into work and, uh, like we're like, oh hey, like the Super Bowls today, whatever. Like you know, you want to go go back home and watch it. You want to go out and watch it. And then she was like, uh, don't we have like Disneyland reservations? And I was like, oh, you're right, we do. <laughs> so. We just uh, we shot down there just so that we didn't get a uh, get dinged for the whole missing a reservation thing. But yeah, that they penalize you if you miss, don't they? Yeah, I think I think like like your first one's free and you get like a little warning and it's like, hey, don't do this again. If you continue to do this, you'll you know lose your some privileges. I think uh, it's it basically prevents you from like making future reservations or like i think you get like four for for the base pass so after that you uh like if you missed one then you would only get like three and then you would only get like two and then you can only make like one at a time and then they're like hey uh sorry you you can't come in anymore i don't know i'm i'm completely making that up <laughs> but the first, say, the first part, man, that's the, first, shit. the first part of that is true i do i do believe that they ding you like your reservation um and they I think they they like you can't you can it shortens the amount of time out that you can make it right um, I think typically it's it's around like 90 days I want to say um, okay. to to where you can make a reservation um, 90 days out so then I think if you, if you miss one it's hey you can only make it 60 days out or you know something along those lines yeah um, I don't know what happens if you continually miss it. I don't ever want to find out because I paid a lot of money for that pass. So I'm going to go every chance that I get. <laughs> Dude, it's like, it, it's like, you know, after, after the pandemic, all these theme parks just went back to normal with their passes. Uh -huh. And then you got Disneyland and it's like, oh, and if you don't fuck come to your reservation, we're going to penalize you. So I'm like, so I'm already paid all this fucking money up the ass. <laughs> yep. To come to your park, and on top of that, I can't even like if I accidentally miss, like I I, I get penalized for it. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm paying into a punishment. Yeah, it's Disneyland. Definitely, Disney in general went a certain type of way during the pandemic, and and how they were going to navigate. And I'm sure that that's part of the reason why the the old guy is back. Um, in terms oh, of heading, Ike. yeah, good old good old Bob. Good old, good old Bobby I. Bobby I. But uh, yeah, I I never really understood their their reservation system. Like when they rolled it out, I understood uh, due to COVID. Um, I wish that they would have, you know, started that a lot earlier. Um, but of course, like everyone was kind of navigating the the panini and you know going going about that. So I think that they did the best that they could at the time. Um, but I mean, you look at other theme parks that 
aren't requiring reservation system now. Um, I know Knotts did it for, I, I think it was their, their taste of Halloween thing. Um, yeah, they, they had it for, for a hot minute. And then it like the first sign of things, you know, getting, getting back to normal. It was all right, cool. Let's, you don't need a reservation. Um, Disneyland kept theirs. I think that they did that in, in part to limit the capacity. Um, I, I am a believer that they artificially limit the capacity sometimes. And I believe that that was part of the reason why they got sued. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice at times, but it does kind of suck. Uh, if you had a pass before the pandemic, you know, you could just go whenever you felt like it. And that's what I uh, blocked out. But yeah, now, now you got to plan every single trip. And I mean, like occasionally, you know, you can check the night before and there might be a reservation, but that that all depends on, you know, what pass you have or, you know, how how lucky you get. I just feel like also, too, it's just too complicated to have a pass now. I mean, like, yeah, you got to check for reservations. Then, like, that was the thing about me having a pass before the pandemic. I could just, like, Sam and I would just be like, hey, you down to go to Disneyland tonight? I'm like, yeah, let's go for a few hours. And then we would we would get on one thing or we'd get on no things and just chill, you know? And so, That's literally what what my friends and i would do we'd get off of work on friday thursday or friday and we'd head down to disneyland we'd go to a lamplight lounge get some lobster nachos and some piggy wings when they had them um eat those uh maybe get a zombie or two and go run through the wilderness adventure course real quick and then head on over to star wars to galaxy's edge star wars land uh and go on a smuggler's run because at the time that was the only ride that was over there and then that was it that was our night smugglers run is so fun it is so much fun <laughs> dude I, I i yeah i i don't get me wrong i love disney i i just we we rent in december like mm -hmm. two days before christmas because my buddy signed us in and it was cool and mm -hmm. you know we went and i i bought the genie the genie pass then i didn't like the way they were doing that because like you couldn't get multiple at the time like you had to use one and so like all the pa fast passes I had for like were like nine fifteen return time. So I was like, I'd have to wait till nine fifteen just to use one, and then yep, you know what I mean. I can't even like plan like oh this is here, this is there, boom. It's like I think I only ended up using it for like one ride, and I was like, oh, this fucking sucks. Yeah, I I definitely think that that's one of the things that didn't quite work out how they thought it would. Um, because I mean even now you you see that. You know, people buy the the lightning lane and, you know, sometimes the lightning lane is an hour and a half long, which defeats the entire purpose of it being a, a lightning lane. Yeah. You know, uh, like I've, I've literally been on rides before where the lightning lane has gotten so long that they've had to shut down the normal queue line just to burn through the lightning lane because, you know, people paid money for that. People yeah. paid money to go to the front of the line, essentially. And the fact that they have to wait an hour, hour and a half still for some of these rides, you know that's that's not cool yeah man i mean i don't know i i think eventually one day i, I think disney's gonna refer back to the old ways of doing things uh, i i definitely agree i think that they they had a good thing going and i think that they're in their experimental stage right now and hopefully they'll hopefully they'll they'll at, le at least adjust it to make it similar to how it was before where you could you know potentially hold more than one you know and i think that's what that's what i was saying you know, like with the the whole like fast lane kind of the genie plan they're gonna they're gonna make it reverted to like you could plan multiple times like if it doesn't overlap within the time or not you can plan to get yeah. and stuff so well i mean that's that's how the the old fast pass system was is like yeah they you know your return time is is one in the afternoon all right, cool. Well, you can make another fast pass reservation anytime after one in the afternoon. You don't necessarily have to use it, your fast pass, but like you still have that piece of paper that says, all right, return time between one and yeah. three or not. So like potentially, all right, cool. Right at one, let's make a fast pass for, you know, pirates while we go on Haunted Mansion. And then. Yeah. And so that's what I liked. It's like, I, I was liking that you can make, you can pretty much plan the whole day and stuff. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, I had a good time. Don't get me wrong, but it's, oh, no, it's always a blast. There was just something about this last trip for me, though. And I was just like, man, I'm starting to like not feel like I'm enjoying this as much as I used to, though. That's so how I'm I was, to feel. I was talking to one of my friends that, that works there and 
we were talking about just like the Disney magic in general. And I don't feel that like the Disney magic is there. And I think that part of that has to do with just like the, the cast members that work there. They're like, there's a noticeable difference between like when I used to go to Disneyland to going to Disneyland now, like a lot of the people that work there just don't seem happy to be there. Like, and I, I, it sucks because, you know, I feel like you get this all, even with haunt too, you get a lot of people that want to, you know, do these, these jobs where they interact with the public a lot, but then they get upset at how the public interacts with them. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, you know, kind of what you're, you're getting yourself into to, to a certain extent, right? Like, of course, no one, no one, no one is going to take being hit, spit on, cussed at, you know, this and that. But like, if you're going into a customer service job, you do have to put on a smile and, you know, do customer service. I mean, it's only fair, right? You got to, you got to give the people at least a serviceable thing. Um, Cause I'll tell you this, bro, like kind of in relation to like customer service, man, I had, by the way, a little sidetrack, but I had probably the best restaurant customer service ever on Valentine's day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent, bro. I was just like, go. dude, uh, we went to a Mexican restaurant right here in, in Norwalk called uh, Marquez and okay. it's kind of like a little hole in the wall. Like it's on a corner and it's not a very big building. It's a, actually a relatively small building. And, uh -huh. um, you know, uh, so my girlfriend comes down and, and we you know we we're originally going to go to a Chinese food place, but they were closed for some reason. They closed on Tuesdays. And I think that's a way to kind of save money. So mm. um, they don't have to waste product, nor they have to pay employees for one day. And because th th that Chinese place over COVID almost uh, closed down for good. Um, oh, really? So I was surprised to see they're still and they make really good Chinese food. It's like it's not like your typical like you go in and it's like in a bar and you pick. It's like it's actual gourmet. You order from a menu and they have entrees and everything, you know, so. So it's one of those. Is it good like family food. style? Oh yeah, big time. Oh, it, it's really. Oh, that's how you know it's legit. <laughs> oh yeah, it's good. It's. I think it's owned by a family too, because like they own like the next spot two doors down, which is actually a Japanese spot, and I was like, equally as good. Um, nice. so they were closed Tuesday. We went there first, and the, they were closed. So then we ended up leaving, and uh, because we were already deciding like, oh, we could do Chinese or Mexican. We'll try the Chinese spot, see if it's open. If it's not, we'll go to Mexican. Um, mm. so we went to the Mexican spot and dude, the, the waitresses were nice. The, I, the, you know, the house staff was just nice. The manager was super nice. Like everyone was just nice. We, we had good service, great food. And I, I was just like, this is probably the best customer service I've ever had at any restaurant, any place I've ever eaten. Like this was awesome. So shout out to Marquez and, and, and Norwalk, man. <laughs> I, I definitely, my girlfriend even wants to come back and try other things because there's a lot, they have a, a wide variety of a menu. I had the uh, the chili verde with uh, rice and beans, so it was, it was really good. Nice. But yeah, sounds good. That's what I'm saying. Customer service to me, I think, is is, is always key. If you act nice and, and you're giving them respect, like, I expect it back. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just kind yeah. of, it's one of those things where I just like, I'm just trying to have a good relationship. Like, I know with those jobs, it could be, it could be tough, especially with. Oh, yeah. No, very high stressful and like i i try and be that person that like kind of goes out of their way to be nice and like be like hey like i understand that some of the people that you have to deal with i'm sorry that you have to deal with them um because like i've i've worked customer service jobs before where i i too have like had to deal with not the nicest of customers or guests or you know whatever you want to call them yeah um so like i i know how it feels to be on the other side so i try and Kind of, I I try and be the the good customer. There you go. Yeah, it's 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 uh, I don't know. I I right now uh, the theme park that I think is really kind of dominating the game too is uh, especially because of yesterday and today, uh, Universal Studios. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's a very small theme park, but they just launched Super Nintendo World, and for yeah. fans of Mario and everyone who's grown up. Uh, with this franchise, with this character, now you get to actually live it in real life. And that is, to me, as a fan, just unreal. Because, you know, you play these games, and you're like, what if you were in those games, though? Like, how would I do in these games, you know? Especially yeah. with Mario Kart. You're like, dude, Mario Kart? Like, I've always wanted to play real-life Mario Kart. And Universal is like, hold my beer, okay. I got you. <laughs> you know, it's like, 
freaking so I'm I'm just stoked, man. I I'm I, I've always been a diehard Universal fan. I I think I, uh, on top of just not only the theme park stuff, but on the on the movie side of things, like Universal is just iconic for some of the most incredible and most memorable franchises of all time. Um, so like just to see them expand and then actually finally getting to go to Universal Orlando like a few years ago in mm -hmm. I think, 2021. Um, for the 50th anniversary of Horror Nights out there was just unreal to me too. And to see that theme park and experience that theme park was just so surreal. And, you know, you, you, it's funny because, like, I don't know about you, man, but, like, growing up as a kid, even today, I, I'm a huge fan of watching, like, POVs and, and everything because, like, I like to see other things in the world that I would like to check out one day. And uh -huh. I would constantly watch POVs in Florida stuff. And then to finally go inside those buildings and to finally live it and like see it with my own eyes was just so surreal to me. I was like, I've watched this stuff on YouTube for years and now I'm finally getting to see it. Like it took long enough, but damn, is it worth it? So I have a funny story. Well, kind of funny. You might find it funny. So the, the first time uh, I've never been to uh universal while harry potter has been open like during the daytime i've been for horror nights obviously um but i've never been to the wizarding world of harry potter at universal studios i knew that the one in florida opened and uh hagrid's the Hag the hagrid ride the the motorcycle one i thought that that was here so the first time that i went to to horror nights uh you know we went one year and i was like oh like they should open up you know hogwarts like that'd be that'd be cool yeah and then like, a year or two later they were like hey we're open so i was like all right cool like i finally get to go I finally get to get to go on the the one ride that i've been like this is so awesome universal has a coaster this and that just because i'm i was oblivious i don't i don't keep up yeah and so we i thought that uh it was flight of the hippogriff so i'm all excited we're you know all right cool i'm gonna go ride flight of the hippogriff thinking it's hagrid's you know motorbike ride and then we get there and I'm like, oh, this this doesn't look right. Like, <laughs> so my disappointment <laughs> was very high. You're like, damn it. I was I was like, I was oh, wait, to prepare to fucking drive a motorcycle today. I was so ready. I would like I was so I was, I was actually ready to ride in the sidecar. Yeah. Like I was totally prepared to just sit there like, all right, let's go let's do this. I can see your tall ass trying to do that. That's like me trying to sit <laughs> in the fucking cart, bro. Oh uh, yeah, I could that yeah, I unfortunately for me when I went, I was a little bit too on the bigger side of of not fitting on the ride. Uh, yeah, that's cuz you're like 8 feet tall. Yeah, I no, I actually was a little <laughs> bit more in weight wise too cuz I've actually lost some weight now. Like I for a I've while lost a lot of weight. Who me? Both you and Sammy have. Yeah. Oh, Sammy Sammy is purposely losing a lot of weight and he's doing a very good job at it. Me, it's just naturally happening. I'm not even trying to lose weight. Like it's just happening. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're just that guy. I, uh, according to Green Clown, I would <laughs> not be that guy. So, I mean, if you know Green Clown, that guy's wild. But, um, I think for me, no, because it, it was it was cool because this this Horror Nights, you know, we we got the frequent fear pass, so we went like a few times before you know haunt season really began because they started like a week or two before like Knots did, so we would go there yeah. every week just to get our fix until Knots opened up. Um. And I, for a long time, until it like first opened over oh, the opening summer, I did not fit on uh, Forbidden Journey, you know, the one that's in, inside okay. the castle, the dark ride inside the yeah. castle. And I, you know, one night I was just, I don't know what motivated me to do it, but one night I saw the line was like super short and I just kind of like was, we were walking by it because remember you had to walk by yeah. to go to the mazes. You had to walk through. Yeah. And we walked by and I went to, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm gonna try a test seat. I've lost a lot. Of, I've lost a few pounds since then. I used to be at my, my, my heaviest. I was 320. I'm now down to 275. I was like, I, I, I have to fit on this. Right. So I freaking, I pulled down the, they have the test seat outside. So I was like, all right, cool. So I pulled down the lap bar and I'm looking at the light, looking at the light, looking at the light. And I put it down to where I, where I can handle it. And then it, <laughs> I see the light is green. I was like, you're like, we're going. <laughs> Babe, we're getting on this ride right now. Um, <laughs> she, unfortunately for her, she gets very motion sickness and and like it's very jerky the ride. So like she, she you know, it, it kind of puts her in a little bit of pain. But for me, I told her I was like, I really want to ride this. Um, you can wait at the exit if you want. 
but I, I, I'll go by myself. I don't care. I just, I haven't rode, I, rode this ride in my own two eyes in a long time. So because I'm so like out of the loop with Universal stuff, I didn't know that that ride used to be in 3D. Like when it first opened, it used to be in 3D and you used to have the glasses. And I guess it was so bad at like giving people motion sickness that they took out all of the 3D elements just because like every single person that was coming off of that was just that straight to the track. used to be in 3D, you're right. I do remember that. Um, yeah, they just turned all the because they have screens, so it's like a mixture yeah. of a dark ride that has actual props and whatnot, and actual like you know animatronics and not, and whatnot mixture with screens. So like, there's like moments where you're like you're flying with Harry Potter because you guys are supposed to be playing a game of Quidditch. Um, mm -hmm. So you see like Harry and Ron and Hermione and they're all there and and Hagrid and everybody. Um, so like they, I think they just reverted them to like 2D. That way you can just see it with your, like a tra like Transformers kind of, but like without the glasses, you know. So, <laughs> but it, it, I mean that ride's great, dude. I I love that ride. Um, you know. Oh, easily one of the better rides. I will say, um, as far as it goes with Universal, they're one of the most most prepared and planned theme parks out there as far as construction goes. Um, oh yeah, they they are on top of every single aspect of their yeah. construction oh big time dude i mean just look at the the kind of pattern they're, they're not ones to kind of rush multiple construction projects at a time because they know it's such a smart park and they know it will cause traffic throughout the park um mm -hmm. they just closed down animal actors and the special effects soundstage which i love special effects soundstage i'm a little sad to see that one go but i'm hoping whatever comes next is written but the reason why i bring that up because they just closed those down like about a month or so ago and mm -hmm. they just opened up Super Nintendo World like this week. So mm -hmm. from what I'm hearing is the Animal Actors building and the Sound Effects building are going to be leaving. They're going to actually demolish them and a new ride is supposed to go there. The rumor right now is a Fast and Furious roller coaster. I hope to God that does not come because I cannot stand that franchise. Oh, come on. But family. No, no family. You know, he said last ride like f three movies in a row. And I have never seen a single Fast and Furious movie. I will say one, two, three, four, and five are okay, are good. Mm -hmm. uh, when six came out, I was like, nah. Seven when came did, out. When did, when did Paul Walker die? Was that six or he seven? He died. So he, he was filming. I think he finished filming seven. Uh -huh. And then he died as as seven, I think, was still in production. They had like a, a little bit. They had a little bit of filming to do, but he died when seven was in production. Um, okay, yeah, because I remember like his brother had to stand in for him for certain scenes. Was it seven or eight? I don't remember. I don't know. I think it was. I all I, I knew I knew Se it was eight. Of, it was literally eight. the first three. I knew of of Fast and Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious, and then Tokyo Drift. And those were like the three that everyone. Tokyo oh, Drift you... is, in my opinion, the greatest one. This that's what that's what people say. I don't know. I've never seen it. <laughs> it's if you get a chance. I mean, yeah, if you get a chance, watch it. Is it, is it streaming on anything? HBO. It might be. Probably HBO. HBO or or Peacock maybe because Universal owns. The yeah, world. no, probably Peacock. Yeah, probably. Pe but Tokyo Drift, in my opinion, was the best one because somewhere along the line of these Fast and Furious movies, they lost the. In my opinion, at least, and if anyone out there is a fan of these movies, I do apologize. I cannot stand them anymore, um, and I'm glad they're ending it with this fucking tenth and final film. Yeah, you heard that right. Ten fucking films in this franchise. Uh, the last time I seen anything like that, anything close to that, was Star Wars, Star Trek, and Lord of the Rings, but at least those made sense. Um, <laughs> but the, the part of me that, that I don't like about Fast and Furious that, that really started like drifting me away from the franchise was... It stopped being about racing, and it started being about heists with just cool cars. And yeah. I was like, the whole point of what invested me into these movies was there was a big altercation through this movie between two rival gangs or whatnot, and their ultimate, you know, settlement for this was let's have a race. Loser leaves town and gives and gives up their car, uh, or you know, whatever happens happens. You know, so. Like that was cool because it was there was like a bunch of little races leading up to that big race, you know, between mm -hmm. all like the, the if they're going up against these guys, then they're gonna race all these other guys to get to that guy, you know. And I I did like that, and that's what I liked very much about Tokyo Drift. Um, so like somewhere along the line there, they just kind of lost that formula, and 
they just turned these movies into big action heist movies. Mm. I thought. I thought it was very ridiculous in the ninth film when they sent a fucking Pontiac to fucking space with a fucking <laughs> jet engine. That just sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> so the premise of this next movie, because I don't know why they would end it like this, is they're going to go all the way back to Fast and Furious, I believe, four or five. It was one where they fucking steal this giant vault and they drive around the city with two cars hooked on it, onto it. And you find out that the guy who owned that vote, uh, that vault was fucking Jason Momoa's character. And I'm like, so Jason Momoa is going to be the next villain. So you're telling me that they stole that vote like years ago and this guy is just wanting to get revenge now? He just found out about it. <sighs> Not according I mean, to the fucking new reshoots they've done where they show him standing there pissed off after they steal his vault. I'm like... What the fuck is going on with this franchise? I'm just saying right now, this better not end with Fast and Furious. In the credits, it better not end with Fast and Furious 10, part one. I'd be so fucking <laughs> pissed right there, bro. Well, no. I mean, they, they got to... The Rock's going to lead the, for the, the first part. He and then Vince, Vin Diesel's character, he's going to show up at the end, he's, he, in the end credits. And it's going to be like... <gasps> And no disrespect to The Rock, I do love The Rock because I am a wrestling fan and I loved him from wrestling before he went onto the acting scene. But goddamn, that motherfucker just sweats in the entire movie. Uh, I think the running joke right now is The Rock, like the for the past like ten years or or fifteen years or so, every movie that The Rock has made, he has played The Rock. Like he hasn't played a single single character. He's just been The Rock in. DC's Black Adam, The Rock in Disney's Jungle Cruise. <laughs> I didn't watch Jungle Cruise. Is that good? I didn't watch it. I didn't want to. I didn't. I the the big rumor was that Jungle Cruise was supposed to uh, retheme the actual Jungle Cruise ride, and I didn't want to watch it because I didn't want to be utterly disappointed because I knew that it wasn't going to be a good movie simply because The Rock was in it. I mean, from from the people that. The Jungle Cruise hold, holds a special place in their heart. They go, eh, like, I was happy with it. It, it did the, the ride justice. And I was like, I, I don't want to risk it because yeah. I really like the Jungle Cruise. It's a great ride, great way to kill time. And it's really, it's a fun time. I, I, I appreciate that humor. I bought it. I just haven't watched it. I know they, I know they do crack a lot of the same jokes from the, the you know, ride. the ride stuff. So that's, that's a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, and that's the reason why I initially brought the Super Bowl because there was a lot of great fucking trailers this year, like a lot. Were there? Of trailers. Oh, dude, I haven't. I haven't even seen like a single commercial that like popped. I didn't. I didn't get to watch a lot of the commercials this year, but the one commercial that I did watch, fucking almost made me cry. Yeah, which one? Oh, okay, so let me set this up for you, man. I'm. I mind you. I'm, yeah, here we go. Uh, me and my girlfriend were in my were uh, we were at my mom's house for Super Bowl. Uh, we had our dog with us, so me and my girlfriend we were just kind of in her room because she had a lot of people over. So we wanted to kind of keep the dog calm a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So we laid in her room and we were just the dog was on the bed and we were just kind of watching the the game and whatnot. I mean, we really don't care about football at all, but um, for someone who doesn't, so for me, someone who doesn't like football, I actually know a lot about football because all the rest of my mom's side of the family are football fanatics. So like the games are on every fucking weekend, you know. Super Bowl's a must, so, like, I know a lot about, like, football. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm walking out. I was like, I'm gonna go get us some desserts, because we had ate, we had a lot of food that day, dude. Uh, let me, let me just, let me just go do some of these menu items we had, because I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> My mom found a recipe to make a replica of Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese, um, which is so bomb. Um, My mom also was like, and this logic didn't make no sense to me, but she did it. She was like, I do not want to buy Albertson's chicken. It's a little bit more expensive. So I'm going to go buy a bunch of Cane's chicken. I'm like, that's even more expensive. <laughs> so much more money. But it's so much good. It's, it's so, so much better, though. It's so much worth so it. So much better. Yeah. Um, so there was some Cane's with some bread. Um, Wait, hold on. So you mean to tell me that you had the, chain, the Cane's chicken tenders with the Chick-fil-A mac and cheese? And the bread. And the bread? It gets better, bro. We had a giant-ass oh fucking God. one of those, like, pizzas that are cut into, like, the squares. Squares? That was good. Dude, it was just, it was a whole fucking, like, when my, that's why I love going to the Super Bowl with my mom's, because she goes all out every year with fucking food. Dude, it sounds like it. Yeah, I'm going like, to have to get you guys over one year. 
please. There's plenty to go around. I guarantee. If not to watch, if not like, don't doesn't even matter about the game. I'm just I'm here for the spread. Yeah, for real, dude. Like this was the first year she ever did Canes, and I was like, what the fuck? We got Canes <laughs> You're like, again. Hey, I- this needs to happen every year you, now. Yeah, that's why I told him. I'm like, you realize you can never go back to any other fucking chicken now because you, you set the bar. This. Yeah, you set the bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, pain. Walmart. If you go to Walmart, you could buy like the big party sandwich. So we had mm-hmm. some of those. So I had one of those as well. A little deviled eggs. You know, some chips, salsa. You know, I'm a good. I'm a fan of deviled eggs. Not a lot of people are. I am. Oh, deviled eggs are. I can literally eat. All of them. Yeah, no, me too. Just just be careful around me afterwards because I get a little gassy. <laughs> and it's not the fucking fun smelling ones either. <laughs> um, so, you know, I go out there, I get some desserts for us, and I turn to the TV and I see this commercial. I don't remember what it was. It was like a farmer's commercial. I don't remember what it was. Okay. I don't remember the company was. So the commercial starts with this little girl and her dog. Uh, the dog's a pup. The little girl's probably about five or six. Um, Mm -hmm. and the parents give her this pup one day. So you start seeing this little girl grow up, and you start seeing the pup grow up with her. This dog, they go through, like, her teenage years, and they go through her young adult years, and then, you know, her full-blown adult years. Um, And you're seeing all them have so much fun throughout all these years, like all these memories they're making together, like they're together for everything, like at the park, all these, you know, they're doing all these things together. Um, As you're seeing the girl grow up, you're seeing her go through, you know, being a child to going through high school to going through – like college, like her leaving for college and then her coming back from college. And then um, mm. the last thing of the, of the, of the, uh, of the commercial is the girl, her husband and her baby are laying in the bed and the dog is laying in bed with her. They're all knocked out except the girl and the dog. Um, and, and you could kind of see where you kind of saw where this was going, but they, 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 they really ended it. They really ended it. Well, you're seeing the dog get older. Mm hmm. And you're like, in your head, you're like, so when you see this final scene between the, the woman and the dog, you're kind of thinking, dude, I don't think the next scene is going to be all that happy anymore. <laughs> I don't think the next scene is going to have a fucking dog in it, and that's going to be fucking sad. Mm-hmm. But what ends up happening is the dog looks at the girl. The girl looks at the dog. She just smiles at the dog because she's just, that's her dog. You know, that's that grew up with her. And... The sad part is, and I guess this was like the metaphor of the of the, the dog passing is the dog literally, his life flashes before his eyes. Like you see everything they did with her growing up of in his point of view. Yeah. yeah. And then like it comes back to the dog, and the dog's face just kind of has like the gray hair and everything like that. And the girl just looks at her, looks at the dog, and pets it. And the commercial ends. I was like, that was the fucking saddest thing I've ever seen in my life, That's bro. Terrible. Why would you hear that on the commercial? Like the super, the biggest. Because- you know why? Okay, and I and I and I've talked to people about this, and a lot of people didn't really know this. Usually for the Super Bowl, a lot of these no-name brands or these brands that you would never expect to do something like this do this so you can remember their name. Because mm-hmm. I don't like again, I I didn't really pay attention to the name, but I do remember that commercial now. <laughs> that was my question. I was gonna be like, so uh, what what company, what brand did this? You're like, I don't know, dude. I just I just watched the dog. Go on, if I go on YouTube and look up that commercial. It will come up, okay, come up. And, yeah. then, and then the company's name comes up, so then you will see the company. If I go, if I send that to commercial to you tonight, I'll be like, hey, this is the commercial. And you're going to look at the end, and you're like, oh, that's the company. Okay. You know? <laughs> like, it, it is it, – it's one thing to, like, kind of – it was just so sad because, like, I went back to the room, and my girlfriend, her being a dog owner and stuff, I was like, I just saw the most fucking saddest commercial that you would relate so much to. Um, And then we watch it together, and she's all like, yeah, that's that's pretty sad. And I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? I'm in tears right now." <laughs> I was like, "Do you mean that was pretty sad?" I was fucking, I'm bawling my eyes out over here. But you know, it was just there. I, I didn't get to see other commercials. Um, I really, uh, the only things I saw were the movie trailers. They released a new movie trailer for The Flash. Um, so I saw that that that, that came out. I don't want to watch it. Why? I just I want to go see it in theaters, and I oh, want. Oh, I thought you everything. were saying you don't want to watch the movie. I'm like, wait, why? Oh no, I want I want to see the Flash. I I've unfortunately have seen the little snippets snippet trailers that they freaking put on TikTok. That like I'm just I'm scrolling. Ah, oh, dang it, I didn't want to see that, so I swipe up real quick. So I do know that uh, the OG Batman, well, Dude. the the OG Batman returns. I'll be honest with you. Okay, like 
this movie was um it was definitely something where a lot of people were like what the fuck is going to happen with this movie oh yeah you know, because of everything that's gone on with Ezra Miller and shit Ezra with DC yeah everything so when this trailer came out that was my question too is how are they going to market this movie to have Ezra obviously being the title character mm-hmm. you know of the fran- of the film and market it like positively to to make people want to come see this movie. We just found out Ezra Miller is not going to be the main character of this fucking movie after watching the trailer. You yeah, know, it's it's Batman. It's, they they it's marketed all- the fuck out of Michael Keaton. I was like, I don't even care about Ezra Miller's Flash anymore. I just want to see Michael Keaton back in action. Yeah, it's ah, I'm it's so stoked for it. They should just call this the Batman featuring oh Flash. Like. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. I've been fighting allergies like crazy lately. It's been super. The weather's been pretty weird. It was freaking 97 degrees last week. It's 42 this week. I don't. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Uh, I'm waking up in the morning and it's like fucking 38, 39 degrees. Yeah, it's insane. I literally, I literally got to work uh, both yesterday and today. And as soon as I pulled in, I looked at the temperature in my car. It said 39. I was. I, like why I did it's I live in Southern California you're not supposed to do this but I had to mute the mic real quick. On. just so that you didn't hear the fucking trumpet playing in the background oh that's okay but yeah it's it's been nuts with weather and everything but um yeah it's it's essentially Michael Keaton's movie so yeah I as it should be yeah as it should be I mean we haven't seen him play Batman since 1992 I believe with Batman Returns that one returned. So I think that you know it's well due. It's been over thirty years since we've seen him play Batman. So would with the Keaton returning, would you return? What villains? What what gallery? What rogue would you bring back from all of the other Batman? Uh, from Keaton's movies or his little universe? Well, for, for, any of them, for the whole. From either Keaton, Kilmer, Clooney. So, we don't talk about Clooney. Oh, but... about Clooney. Well, Clooney <laughs> Even Clooney thinks he was the worst Batman. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Clooney, for uh, doing that for Having us. self-awareness. Yes. Um, here's the thing about the story that they're going after for Flash. It's supposed to be Flashpoint, obviously. Um, yeah. However, they're approaching it very differently. Whereas in the comic and in the animated movie... Flashpoint just goes back in his timeline and just changes his mom not dying, and it's still his timeline. From what I'm seeing, it seems like he's in a different... This is opening the multiverse, and it seems like he is in a different multiverse, specifically Michael Keaton's 89 world. Um, Mm -hmm. From what I gathered, uh, because that's the universe his mom did not die. And so from what I'm seeing in the trailers and whatnot, it seems like we're going to go through a lot of what we've established in Zack Snyder's universe thus far. And Mm. essentially you're going to see a lot of things getting changed and whatnot for the worst, which is causing that paradox. Mm. And this is all, this movie is supposed to be the reset button. So James Gunn can do his stuff. Mm. Um, So it's going to be interesting to see. I, I think what's bittersweet about it is this is going to be the last appearance of Ben Affleck, Batman, um, which for me, I was a huge fan of. Um, he was very comic accurate. I know a lot of people are, are, are complaining that he did kill sometimes, but I'm yeah, not- I wasn't the biggest fan of Batfleck. Yeah. I, 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 but I, I also attribute that to, you know, Bale was my Batman, right? Just like for our, for our parents, Keaton is their Batman. I haven't met a whole lot of people who, who you know, say, oh yeah, Kilmer is my Batman. But, Kilmer did a good job, though. Kilmer, Kilmer did do a good job. I but I think that it like for me not liking Batfleck, it was like that generational thing where it's like Keaton out of out of that era of movies, Keaton was the best Batman. For you know you and I growing up, it was you know Batman, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, and then like that was our that was our Batman. My Batman will always be Kevin Conroy. Well, yeah, I mean, the animated series is, is the animated series. I mean, you got the best Joker on there. You got the best Batman on there. There's just no questions asked. Those are the two. That duo together. 
I, f- I feel like the animated and, and unfortunately well we we can't get that Batman again but uh I did enjoy him his little uh cameo in a uh, was it a uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths? Yes. When he played, Cri- when he actually played Batman. Played Batman for the first time. And he was playing the fucking version from a comic book series called Kingdom Come. Um, mm-hmm. Although him being evil was not in Kingdom Come, but the overall appearance and look was from Kingdom Come because in Kingdom Come it's supposed to be really far into the future, and the whole point of Kingdom Come was a social commentary on basically society where like. The new heroes, they were going a little too chaotic and whatnot, so the old heroes had to come out of retirement just to stop them. Um, mm-hmm. And so it seemed like they kind of did that with that storyline. When you meet uh, Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne, he's wearing that kind of suit, that exosuit to kind of keep him. Yeah. And in Kingdom Come, Batman, Bruce Wayne, because he's older, he wears the same exosuit. So I was like, that's a cool nod to that. On top of that, they also they also nodded to um, a Kingdom Come Superman when uh, – Brandon Routh reprised his role as Superman, and he was wearing that 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 suit. That was the same suit that they that Superman wears in Kingdom Come, which is one of my favorite Superman suits. You know who I want to see them bring to the uh, the silver screen? I want to see Terry McGinnis, Terry McGinnis, the Batman Beyond. Oh, Batman! So let me tell you a little story about what was going to happen before James Gunn stepped in. I'm ready. Michael Keaton was set to be coming back in Batman in a huge way. We're talking multi- yeah, he's, multiple he's pictures. Old, old man Bruce Wayne. Yeah, he was gonna. His first comeback was going to be in Flash, the Flash movie, and then mm-hmm. it was going. His next comeback come out was going to be in the Batgirl movie, which was going to, uh, which we're never going to see the light of day anyway. So, you know, we can forget about that one. And one of the canceled Batman movies was actually going to be a live action Batman Beyond movie with Michael Keaton playing Batman and mentoring a uh, apprentice coming up as the new futuristic Batman. Would have been fun. It would have made him millions of dollars. Can guarantee that because you got the classic Batman who everyone loves mm-hmm. with the Batman Beyond storyline. You're like, bro, that's it. That's perfect. It would have been amazing. It would have been fucking phenomenal. But thanks, Warner Brothers. <laughs> I blame Warner Brothers more than I. Everybody's blaming James Gunn, dude. And I, see, I, I I'm defending the fuck out of James Gunn. I think he's going to turn this universe around big time. See, I, I hope that he does. I just, I hope that he main is able to maintain the grittiness that DC has. Like that was for me, that was always something that set DC apart from Marvel, especially when Marvel started, you know, they're pumping out movies is that like, you could always tell the difference between a DC movie and a Marvel movie. And the, like the DC, it for me, DC felt, for as you know w- having heroes like superman like batman felt grounded to me whereas like like especially uh watching like nolan's version of you know his his batman universe it was like okay yeah that could actually happen that's plausible right so i i, I hope that because i feel i feel like james gunn has a very like i his his movies can be a little campy at times like i feel like like guardians is a good movie but it's like it's not it's not a serious movie. It's more of a action comedy, I guess. So he's writing the next Superman movie right now as we speak. He's actually writing a lot of uh, new DC projects coming out. Um, he's he's because he's he's basically a he's basically Kevin Feige at DC Studios. Yeah, I was I was gonna say he's he's favoring the uh, the yeah, DC universe pretty much, and he's and he's playing the Kevin Feige role. So you know, it's 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 cool to see, but. I always tell people, I'm like, they're like, I don't know about James Gunn writing a Superman movie. I just tell them one word to a movie that he did already, and that movie is Brightburn. And that was essentially an evil Superman movie. When when did that come out? It came out, I think, in like 2018, 19, I think. And the premise of it, it was basically as it was. What if this, what if a kid came down like Superman? had the same powers and everything, but instead of growing up to be good that we know and, and helping out humanity and everything, he's actually an alien sent here to destroy and take over the world. Hmm. Huh. And, like, the way the trailers were marketed, it was literally marketed exactly like Man of Steel when, it, when those trailers came out and shit, and it was like, it was nuts. And it's a horror movie, um, but it's essentially a, 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 a evil Superman movie. Um 
And I, yeah, I have never heard of this. It's so I'm, good. It really up right is. now. It so, sounds very. If you get a chance, watch it because it, it's it's supposed to be like evil Superman, but it's actually a horror movie. He kills people and everything, like, and it's brutal. But um, yeah, it's it's such a good movie. So that gives me faith that that James Gunn has a Superman movie in the bag, like no problem. Interesting. So, huh. but I do like the Batman approach that he's taking. So they're doing Batman Brave and the Bold, and the Batman approach they're taking for his new cinematic universe will be him and Damian Wayne. Will be the first time we actually get a Robin since fucking the nineties. Since uh, Chris O'Donnell. Yeah, and his Robin was good when he first debuted. We but... haven't had a Robin that wasn't officially a Robin. I don't count. I, Joseph Gordon <laughs> it doesn't count. I I do think it's funny that. Uh... Wasn't that one of uh, Christian Bale's conditions to signing on? Was that Robin could never appear in the the franchise? And then the last, uh, you know, the last like second, he's like, "Oh, hey, hey, Chris, did we did we change our mind? All right, know, cool." Right? Technically, we never got to see him dress up as Robin, so it's true. They kind of just left that open in case they ever wanted to return to the franchise. So, really, I, you know, I I'm going to say that. The Dark Knight Rises. I wasn't satisfied with the how that trilogy concluded. I hated the way they made Bane. I really did. I'm sorry. I know they try to make it realistic, but that's not my Bane. Yeah, no, my my Bane is the Luchador. Fucking, with, the yeah, Jack with the the and they, Oh, I'm gonna break your back, Batman. But yeah, that's I nice. that's that's my Bane. I mean, Tom Hardy did a good job. Oh, I love Tom but, Hardy. It was it was hard. It was also hard for me too because Tom Hardy and Christian Bale were both like five nine on a good day, so so to to have them be these imposing you know forces of you know good and evil essentially, and I, it, it was just like ah. I just gotta... rewatched Batman Begins recently. Um, mm-hmm. In my opinion, the most underrated out of the entire trilogy. Raz or Raish? Um, I've always called him Raish Al Ghul. But every now and then I'll call him Ra's al Ghul, so I go back and forth. You flip flop. Yeah, I could do that because I'm a fan, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you can't. You're obviously a fan too, so you could do that too. But I think diehard fan, Batman fans get that luxury of whatever they're feeling that day. They'll be like, I feel like calling him Raish. No, nah, I feel like calling him Ra's. But um, <laughs> dude, that movie's so fucking underrated, dude. The Scarecrow character alone is so mm-hmm. fucking good. That it really like I even thought that would make a, a fucking fantastic haunt character. Oh, uh, the scarecrow? Yeah. Definitely. Imagine Def- though, like if we had the technology to pull off those effects though of like making people think that they're seeing one thing when they're really not. That's called acid. I mean <laughs> like you there there's ways. The that, that like that don't involve drugs or like <laughs> you could totally do it with like a special effects, but it, it, I think at that point you would delve more into the room to the realm of not necessarily like a haunted attraction, but more like a like an escape room type thing where you have to find your way out of yeah. doctor's laboratory. Dude, Jonathan Crane is easily like I think one of the most underrated villains of the Batman Rogues Gallery. Um, if you if you look at his motives as far as both Batman um, Arkham Knight, the video game, and Batman Begins, his motives is to poison the fuck... Well, at least in Batman Begins. His motives was to fucking dip his fucking fear toxin into the water so that way when they evaporate it uh, with, the, with the machine that was stole from Wayne Tech, mm-hmm. it would come up as smoke and it would fucking affect everybody. Mm-hmm. And... The idea of someone doing that on a fucking big city level of Gotham City is fucking insane, dude. Like, it's nuts to see, like, what his fear toxin does to people, too. Like, I think that's always been my favorite part about reading the comic books and playing the video games, watching the character, was his fear toxin affects everyone differently. And and by now, Batman's kind of already mastered his fear toxin. Like, he kind of already knows how to avoid the fear and not let it get to him. Um so it was really cool to see that character of Scarecrow, not to mention that character was in every single Batman movie to the very end, you know, like he was in Dark Knight, he was in the very beginning trying to sell again. Well, that, that, was, that was a nod to, to him being the most recurrent rogue, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, 
not to mention his role in Dark Knight Rises, where he plays the judge. Um, mm-hmm. That was actually supposed to go to Heath Ledger for his Joker. Yeah. Like that's who that was supposed to be. They all the all, in the third film, all the villains that you've seen thus far were going to return, uh, and they're running chaotic in, in Gotham. I, I have a feeling that maybe there would have been. Could you imagine how different of a movie that would be if he, if Heath Ledger was That's in it? That's what I'm saying because he was such a fantastic character in The Dark Knight. I think he would have had a much bigger role in the third film. I I feel like he would have inadvertently overshadowed everyone. Yeah, everyone. Everyone, dude. Like I think he would have even overshadowed fucking Tom Hardy. Oh, definitely. Like I would have been watching this movie like fuck Tom Hardy, give me fucking Ledger back. I want more Joker. <laughs> yeah, I want more Joker. But like with Raza Ghul and everything, like you know him being behind why Scarecrow can do what he can do now and everything, and then that big reveal at the end when you find out it's actually fucking Liam Neeson who's fucking Raza Ghul. I mean, any Batman fan from the beginning was like, "That's Raz." It's like as simple as that, dude. He hides within his people and then he comes out mysteriously out of nowhere. Um, mm-hmm. But that ending to the Batman Begins it gives me goosebumps every fucking time. Like him and Gordon are talking, they got the bat signal on and everything. And they're going, and he goes, he goes, he goes. We have a whole city to to take down, and you're wearing a, and you're fighting crime in a bat suit. He goes, <laughs> he goes. All right, let's take this next case for uh for a thing. He's like double homicide, all this, and uh he leaves a calling card at the end, and Batman gets the fucking bag, and you see it's a fucking playing card, and you're like, Joker, bro, and he turns it around and it says the Joker on it. I was like, and then and then fucking Batman, I'll look into it. <laughs> and then um, and he goes I never got to thank you and you never will and then fuck it takes off like that is the perfect ending to like uh, to start a Batman movie right there especially when you're going from an origin story to like his first fucking like big case to like that's where we're going like this is how we're st- establishing this universe like it's so mm-hmm. great and then when we get into Dark Knight it's like a whole fucking journey dude I w- did you like the new Joker in uh oh with Joaquin, I fucking no. Him. Oh, and uh, the Batman. Yeah, uh, I would liked. Well, the guy you know the guy who played it right. He was the guy. In, he was one of the uh, Eternals. I don't know if you yeah. saw that movie, but I did not. I skipped it. <laughs> he was. I will say this: it was good for Matt Reeves to start a Batman film and not make the Joker the main villain in the first film. Much like how Christopher Reeve or yeah. uh, not Christopher, um, Christopher Nolan avoided that for his first film. Um, and it seems like they might be avoiding that for the second film. I'm not 100% sure where they're going to go. I I kind of remember the rumor being uh, about uh, Hugo Strange. Oh, that would be so good. I, I want to say that I read something about that. I want to say that it, it had to do with uh, Scarecrow and Strange. I did just read recently in an interview, Matt Reeves just did a, a panel for, uh, I think, the... It was like 10 or 15 years since Cloverfield came out, the very first one, and he directed that. Um, and he just did a panel, and they asked him about, they asked him some Batman questions, and he goes, yeah, you know, it's been, you know, every, with, every, with all the chaos going beyond the scenes of DC, he goes, we're still good to, on board to do Batman 2. Um, he goes, you know, um, it's going to be, you know, this movie we're going to focus more on on Bruce Wayne as the character of Bruce Wayne, and, and we're not going to make the villains the, the kind of main characters. We're going to really focus on Bruce Wayne and, and Batman and stuff. So I was like, I, I really didn't feel that way with the first Batman, though. I felt like everyone had a good amount of spotlight. You know what I mean? Like, I I loved the relationship between Batman and, and Catwoman. That was awesome. Um, to see fucking Penguin, you know, Colin Farrell as the Penguin was just fucking phenomenal. And the rebooted Riddler, I love what they did make him more like a Zodiac killer. Yeah, no, that was good. I will say that that hearing, you know, you say that about uh, focusing more on Bruce Wayne, like that does make more sense to me because I feel like we got it. If for for any fan of of the Batman knows that the Bruce Wayne, for all intents and purposes, is the Batman, and Bruce Wayne is his alter ego. Yeah. So it was nice in the first movie we got to we got to meet the Batman for the second movie it would be nice to now meet Bruce Wayne and see how he navigates, you know, his world as Bruce Wayne, you know, trying to to still be that detective of, you know, the Batman and yeah, uh, the, thing should... 
the thing I really loved about this Batman movie too was in the sense of we got to see him be a detective and yeah. it wasn't it wasn't an origin story this Batman universe was like all right you know the fucking character you know how he became Batman you know what motivated him to become Batman his parents mm-hmm. death um so we're going to go uh we're we're in year 2 of Batman cuz if you pay attention to the beginning when he's writing in his journal it says yeah. year 2 uh like night the night experiment or something like that um so this in this movie, yeah, he's been Batman for already two years. However, he this was the first major villain that he fought. Like, before he fought Riddler and before he fought, you know, um, Penguin and all these people, he was just fighting, like, kind of... Yeah, like, small-time. Right? Yeah, like, small-time things and whatnot. And, you know, it was just one of those things for him to just really... Uh, just establish the character. Like, yeah, he's already known. There's rumors going around that there is this fucking vigilante just fighting the streets. And he hasn't. And now, now these villains are coming out and revealing themselves. Like the Riddler came out and now you're getting introduced to Penguin and the, and the Falcon and the Carmine Falcone family and everything. Like that was really cool to see that. So like, it was really cool to kind of see him do his first big villain and mm-hmm. him kind of taking notes of his experiment and everything going wrong, everything going right, you know, and, and to kind of take that, that premise of the long Halloween and kind of make it into a film, which was really cool, which was essentially what's, which would it. Yeah. That's what it was, was, you know? So that's what I liked about that. So did you, did you watch Gotham, the TV show? I think I watched like three or four seasons and I just fell off. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it kind of fell off. It got repetitive. I really liked the Falcone from that show. Right. And I, I wish that, and there was some, some, type of way that, that you know they can bring him into into this universe but because I, I think he did a really good job yeah yeah they but. did they were i mean there was a lot of the there was a lot of good cast members on that one especially leading up to like you're seeing a ptsd bruce wayne as a kid you got you got to see those that, that gap filling of what was going on with bruce as a kid growing up and what motivated him to want to become batman you know mm-hmm. so you see him training with alfred and everything like that was really cool for me to see like you're getting more of the extended storyline of batman yeah, I I actually really like that Alfred too from the show. He was a very good thought, Alfred. He was a really good Alfred. He did an excellent job at playing Alfred. I will say that's my only pet peeve with this movie is the relationship between Batman and Alfred in this in the Matt Reeves one. It seems like they just kind of argued all the time, and yeah. the way I've always looked at the relationship between Batman and Alfred was Batman considered him more of a father than his own father because that was yeah. the person that always took care of him and always looked after him and everything. And I've always liked that relationship between Batman and Alfred where he looks at him as more of a father than his own father. Um, he looks to him for advice. He looks to him for everything. He helps him, like, you know, because... Um, That's Michael Caine leaving, so heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Um, I did like, uh, whatchamacallit, as the role of Alfred, though, um, for this movie. Uh, Andy Serkis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was. He's a phenomenal actor, and he did a really good job with this role. I love the casting choice they chose for Jim Gordon. Um, especially changing his ethnicity, like that didn't even bother me because I was like, this guy's a fucking great actor, bro. If you've been watching What If, like that show is great, and he played the he voiced the Watcher, and he's he's awesome. Dude. So, well, wasn't the uh... no uh, Harvey Dent was black, and he was a uh, uh, Lando. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's, and, what's his name? Um. Oh my god. It's Lando. <laughs> It's not Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers is Apollo Creed. And Chubbs. Yeah. As, as soon as you say it, I'm going to know it. Hold on. I'm looking it up right now. We're looking up... Uh, Lando. Oh, it's is it Billy something? Billy D. Williams. Yes, Billy D. Williams. <laughs> I can't. Believe, yeah, he you know, was funny. It's a funny story about Billy D. Williams. He actually came back to reprise because he never got to play Two Face. He got to play yeah. Harvey yeah. Dent, so he came back to reprise that role of Harvey Dent slash Two Face in the Lego Batman movie. Yeah, it, it was, was awesome. Great. It was awesome. Yeah, the Lego great. Batman movie was another like solid movie. Oh, it was great. I they need to make a sequel to that already. I was like, dude, that like I was not expecting the 
like this quality of a Batman movie from, when, from Lego. When but he first appeared in the, the park. in the Lego movie, I was like, dude, I want a whole movie just of him. Like, give me a whole... And then they're like, we got you. And it, I went to go see that in theaters, and I was like, this was one of the greatest Batman films ever fucking made. Oh, yeah. Easily. <laughs> yeah, like, and it's a fucking kids movie, bro. And, like, I... I think I think that's the part that like was so surprising was that it's just like I didn't go in expecting much, but it like it literally knocked it out of the park. It was hilarious. It had its moments, like it had heroics. It had everything you needed in a bat mo- Batman movie, and then some. So it was it was it was beautiful, dude. I I absolutely loved what they did with that film, and I hope they make a second one. Um, hint, hint, like, hint. So, let's talk about currently what's going on right now. Fucking Ant Man and the Wasp dropped today. Today, fifty three percent, bro. I haven't decided if I want to go see it tonight. I, I want to, but you know, my coworker and I were talking about that. She was like, "Yeah, like people are saying that it sucks," and I was like, "What are you talking about? Like, I haven't heard a single thing about it sucking." The, She's like, "Yeah, cause the Rotten Tomatoes." I don't, I don't and, like Rotten Tomatoes. I hate their fucking service so much. I um, I hate Rotten Tomatoes, but what I was looking at it. And I was like, okay, a lot of this seems like you you don't understand like what this movie is. From what I've heard a review, I heard one review saying that it doesn't have the same comedic approach that the the last funds did, and that kind of takes a burner out of it. But I used to, <laughs> yeah, it is supposed to because I'm I heard some rumors about this. I don't know if they're true or not, but I won't say it in case they are. Um, but. With that review being said, the second part of the review was Jonathan Majors as Kane the Conqueror is fucking phenomenal, and he really steals the whole that, show in that film. That was literally everything that I that I did read. It was like, ah, uh, this movie doesn't quite have the same you know zing that it had the, for the first two, but Jonathan Majors is King. Save the movie, dude. Jonathan and I'm Majors, like, fucking bravo for him. He is just coming up so fucking quick, and he's such so, a fucking good actor. Here's here's my thing in terms of like Ant Man. I think that a lot of people don't remember that like the last like the the last big event in terms of like the cinematic universe happened like over COVID. It happened with WandaVision and, and I guess Doctor Strange if you really want to count that. Yeah. Like WandaVision yeah. and Loki kind of set the tone for Ant Man with you know Loki more so with the introduction of you know the Watcher and King. Good King. Um, yeah, a variant of King, as they call him. A variant of King. So, like, I, I, do, I think that people forget that this isn't supposed to be like a, a standalone movie. Like, this is a transitional movie where we're oh. literally setting the stage. Oh, we're setting the for, stage for the next Avengers uh, movie. No, that and that's literally it. It's you're you have two big storylines going on right now in the the MCU, and that's King the Conqueror and Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion, that's coming. But right now it's King the Conqueror, but like we still don't know who King is. So this movie is supposed to say, hey, this is King. You might think you have an idea of King, but uh hey, here's here's who he really is. I know the source material, man. I'm like, Kang, I've been waiting for you to come into a fucking movie already. <laughs> God damn it. Give me that big blue helmet. No, I, I'm going to be very uh I'm looking forward to this movie, in all seriousness. Um there's so many I mean, I, I, I stopped listening to a lot of rumors about cameos and stuff like that because I think I think I went in expecting so much with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and I walked out like it was I, a fun movie, but like it, it wouldn't give me what I wanted. I was so disappointed with Doctor Strange. I completely thought that it was gonna be a different story. Yeah. And I do not agree with Oh, with the I, I thought for with, sure they were gonna interview. Wanda's a villain, redemption. Wanda's a villain, redemption. Wanda's a villain again. It's like, dude, come on. I, I definitely thought they were going to – because they've done this twice to me already, MCU. For WandaVision, I thought we were going to get Mephisto for sure because it was leading up to that. I was like, Mephisto's coming, bro. There's no question about it. Mephisto's behind all this shit, using Agatha as a puppet and shit. And then I was like, no, Mephisto. But you set up all of it to, for it to be Mephisto, and then we didn't get Mephisto. So I was mm-hmm. pissed off about that. Then the second one was like watching all the trailers for Doctor Strange and Multiverse Magic. I'm like, we're getting Nightmare of the Demon. He works with Mephisto. That means we're getting one step closer to Mephisto. I'll take Nightmare for now. And Nightmare's a fucking badass character. No Nightmare. I was pissed off about that. But I will say it was cool to... 
I think what, what what makes me like it a little bit is the fact that one, Rami came back to the Marvel universe. Yeah. Two, I mean, it was Marvel's essentially first horror movie, and there was horror elements into it. But in order for it to be really good horror, you had to make that movie rated R. Oh yeah, yeah, and I I'm curious to to see when Disney is going to Deadpool. Ele- do you think is it going to be Deadpool? Deadpool three is going to be rated R. They've already confirmed that. There's no ends for buts about it. That movie has to be rated R because you cannot make it without it not being rated R. And it's going to be part of Marvel Studios. So you heard the rumors uh, about you know who's coming back for Deadpool three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Logan. Canadian. <laughs> Logan, man, that's gonna be I, fun. I want them to. I think I think one thing that I want from from Disney's MCU is I want them to do. I don't want them to remake Daredevil. I want them to continue Daredevil. They kind of already did though. They kind of already slightly rebooted him. Yeah, and She Hulk, and I I wasn't like the biggest fan of that. I think that's but, what saved me to like the show because I was like Daredevil's back. Yeah, that's it. I think that was like for me, that was like the one redeeming quality is that cool Daredevil's back in She Hulk and we get Kingpin and Hawkeye. That was a good surprise because Vincent, I, Vincent D'Onofrio is one of my favorite actors. That was a very of, good surprise, in Kingpin. but I feel like Kingpin is his best character yeah. to date. Oh, 100%. He, I will say, he's the most comic accurate version of that character. Um, because we did have that character once before in the movie with Ben Affleck. Um, but he, talk about he that. what happened? So we don't talk about that. <laughs> I actually enjoyed that movie. Um, I really dug Daredevil's costume in that movie. It was fucking bitching. Yeah, you did have a good costume. Yeah, that costume was bitching. That's the Daredevil I wish we would get for like the MCU, like that costume, because like that was the most comic accurate costume I've ever seen in my life. So would you would you want like that costume with a uh, Charlie Cox in the suit? Yeah, like if they they may have to modernize it a little bit, maybe not go full leather, but like I did like the one he had in the Netflix world where it was kind of like that all red and like that black, and mm. I, that was a cool one. I thought that was bitching, um, but that that one Ben Affleck war was like so comic accurate that I really liked that one. But I will say like there's a lot of things coming in the MCU which I'm very excited for. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum A is going to set up, like you said, a lot of things. We're going to start setting up the Kang storyline leading into Avengers Kang Dynasty. Um, and then we're going to end up, you know, I think with this movie, what we're going to get out of it is Kang is essentially going to escape the Quantum Realm. And that's what's going to start setting up the courses for Avengers Kang Dynasty. I think that's literally. Haven't, haven't seen the movie like that. To me, that's how it's going to end is. Scott's gonna win, but he doesn't he's really win. win. You know what I mean? Because Kang, you know, Kang Kang does Kang things, so it's kind of like, ah, you might you might have you might have not won, but I I think that was even in like one of the trailers that he's like, I don't have to win. I just we, we both, both have, have to lose. lose. Yeah, that's so what like yeah, thinking yeah. he might die in this. They're movie. both gonna they're both gonna lose, but does does Kang really ever lose? I mean, we know he's not going to. Obviously, no. we got a lot of plans for him. He's the next big bad of the MCU right now. Um, what I'm curious about is how it's going to translate to Secret Wars, right? Immediately following that, like we got Secret Invasion going on, but how are these two storylines going to intertwine with Kang using the Secret Wars to his, his advantage? I that's a good question. I I can kind of see Kang seeing seeing past. Everything you know, as as he's king, so king's got some skills. Uh, he he knows how to read things, you know, situations, people. I think that he'll see past it, and he'll it'll eventually turn into um a little bit of infighting again. So kind of like revisiting that civil war of who can you trust, who can you not trust, and he's definitely going to use that to his advantage. And I think that it's just going to be an exploitation of these new Avengers and as they try and navigate, you know, finding themselves and where they fall into the world of, you know, the hierarchy of, of superheroes and whatnot. And it's going to be interesting. It really is. I'm excited to see what goes. I'm just super excited that we're finally going to get 
Fantastic Four after so long too. It's gonna be fun. I'm. You know uh, what I want? I want. I want Nick Cage back <laughs> as Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. You know what I want to see? The rumor is Norman Reedus. Right? Huh? The rumor is Norman Reedus, or is that like a fa- just a fan thing? He's interested, but it's more of a fan thing right now. It would be he would. I think he would make a good Ghost Rider. I think he would be good. I, the, my only issue is that I feel like him and Nick Cage are are up there in age, and I kind of want a younger Ghost Rider only because I want I like I want these characters to be able to. Go on for a little bit. Go on for for ten years. I, I want the Robert Downey Jr. who I'm signs on for fucking Moon Knight season two and Blade, bro. Dude, right? Like the only thing we've gotten teased of Blade so far is there is a movie in the works, and that he had a fucking voice cameo at the end of Eternals, and that pissed me off. <laughs> I was like, "You're just gonna leave that open? Like we're not we're gonna I'm gonna have to wait like another five years to find out what happens with this." That's why I always said when I have kids, I'm gonna make them wait <laughs> like I did for all these. Like you, movies. like oh, we're gonna watch Iron Man today, and then next year we're gonna watch the Hulk. All right, here you gotta watch Iron Man five years before you get to see the Avengers come together. <laughs> yeah, you got to do what I did. I fucking started this journey in 2008. Now we're in 2028. <laughs> what do you expect? You know, yeah. I feel like that's a reasonable time for me to have kids, right there, right? Like that's another five years. That's another five years down the line, and I'll be about, I'll be thirty. You got time. I got time. Got like Mister Incredible says, yeah, I've got time. I've got time. Yeah. Speaking of time, I know we're running short on time because I know you have. To, are you are you out of here at seven today, or? I uh, no, I'm I'm good to keep going. If, oh, okay. If you All want right. to. I didn't know if we were doing it till seven again or not. But uh, um, no, good. I'm good today. It's just uh, usually on the other day that we do this, I I do have that time commitment. So, you know, you got you to gotta take care of the priorities, right? The real life. Um, I feel like a good way to, to kind of wrap this up with, with our final topic is uh, talking about uh, something that I know you and I both like and, and something that this channel is about. Um, the latest rumors to Halloween Horror Nights this year. Oh, I, I haven't heard any. Let's, uh, but I, I, was digging, on me. I was digging through the Twitterverse the other day. You know, people like to talk on the Twitterverse. Um, and I was kind of going through some tweets and just kind of looking around, seeing what the community was saying and, and whatnot. And mm-hmm. I decided to screenshot a couple of things that caught my interest. First and foremost, according to HHN unofficial rumor has it that universal Orlando may be looking into running Halloween Horror Nights on every night in the month of October. This would include Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh. First and foremost, this is my issue with that. I'm gonna say not feasible. <laughs> it's not feasible, and you can and you can fucking, you know, put your two. Cents I can into attest. This. Yeah, you can put your two cents into this as a haunt actor. Um, Halloween Horror Nights last year in Orlando. From what I heard, staffing was already low, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of dead spaces. Even staffing for like ser- food services and everything was low. So if they're going to do that. Uh, one thing I read on Twitter, I forgot who it was from, but credit goes to this guy who said it. If they're going to do something like that, they need to have multiple casts come in on different days. Where you have a cast day that just takes over all of fucking Mondays. A cast B that takes over all of Tuesdays. You know, and then kind of rotate back and forth. That way, everyone's not working every single day, but they're all getting fair opportunities to be their own stars and kind of scare and everything. Yeah, I'm I'm curious how that would work from like a logistical st- standpoint because I know that Universal, it, at least out here, and I'm assuming it it operates this way in Orlando, they are very, I guess, uh, they they're very like they they take into time. So I I think it's an hour on hour off. I'm still here. Yeah, no, you're here. fine. Yeah, I get you. Uh, I th- I think that they're very like conscious. They're they're aware of. You know how how much work like being a and a scare actor can be sometimes. Um, so I'm I'm curious. Like you would almost have to run like forecasts rather than just an A and B, right? So you'd you'd have like your A and B do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? And your your you know your uh, your C and D cast do Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then you could probably like split them on Sunday. Right. 
right? But like, I don't know if if you would make that much. Like, I don't know if you would make enough money from like an operation standpoint to even justify having that many people on payroll. I will say Universal Orlando is a little bit more successful than out here in Hollywood. However, Hollywood, it seems like this year was a record breaking year for them because of the weekend. Um, so speculation. I I think that Universal as a whole, as a company that they realize, hey, we have this really great thing in Orlando. Hey, we have this really great thing in Hollywood. It's never been able to mesh. It's never been able to work I hope together. You know, by the way, this might be cut out into a separate fucking video because I've been meaning, <laughs> meaning to make a video about this, and this <laughs> is just the perfect. So shoot the shit. Might even spawn another video. Hey, it happens Adrian sometimes. <laughs> um, but I think that, that last year, it, it was known that a lot of the, the creatives from Orlando – helped hollywood um in terms of you know this is the first year that we got i uh you know uh oh original content uh at hollywood and you know quite some time right and this was the first year that you know what happened in orlando had an effect at hollywood and what happened in hollywood had an effect on orlando yeah. and i think that you know now with the the park in uh in Vegas that they're trying to do. They're trying to do one, one in right? Texas too, right? What's up? They're trying to do one in Texas too? Um, they're building a theme park in Texas, which is supposed to be like a family-friendly theme park. Okay, so um, not Halloween. Nothing yet on if they're going to expand a Halloween Horror Nights Halloween event out there for the, the season, but right now it is confirmed that they are going to be building a brand new theme park for uh, okay. more to cater to family out there in Texas. For sure. So forget Texas. Love you, Texas, but for the sake of this conversation... Go away. <laughs> so, so we got Hollywood, Orlando, and then we got Vegas, right? I think that they are trying to to form kind of a united front in Japan. In Japan. Well, but I feel like Japan is they do their own kind of horror nights. Like they're they do their own thing, but they do have a horror nights out there. They do have a horror nights, but it's not. It's it's like the the Disneyland's around the world. You know, actually, Disney actually only owns Anaheim, Orlando, and just recently Paris. So, like. I think that that we have Hollywood, we have Orlando, and then we have Vegas. I think that everything is going to be related to one another in in the sense that, you know, you're having you have your Murdy on, on this side and I don't know who the guy is in, in Orlando. It was Mike Aiello for the longest with his team. I don't know who's doing those I, I think he went back for a little bit. I don't know, but No clue. Mike you, Aiello was you, dope. He was actually a uh, fun fact about Mike Aiello in twenty nineteen at Midsummer Scream. Him and John Murdy did a uh, him, John Murdy, and Chris Williams. Chris Williams is the uh, art, you know, art design uh, lead at Halloween Horror Nights here in Hollywood, and uh, they all three did a panel together. They flew Mike out, and he did a panel with everybody. It was really cool, man. Like it, Mike Aiello seems like a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, it's it's interesting to see because on a creative standpoint, everything happening in the Vegas location is coming from the Orlando creative team. Hollywood had mm -hmm. nothing to do with that. So it's all Orlando's creative team. Because in the concept art, you see like Jack the Clown, you see a lot of the icons. But mm -hmm. in the press release and everything, you heard a lot of big names such as Jordan Pill, Jason Blum, the Universal Monsters. You know what I mean? So it seems like they're going to cater to kind of everyone. You know what I mean? They're just going to bring the Orlando experience out to Vegas, which will be a lot closer yeah. for California people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't have to go to the other side of the goddamn country just to go see my favorite icons when they can come to Vegas where I can just drive fucking three, four hours to get out there. So. I mean, I'm excited, dude. I mean, yeah. I'm excited too. Like, that's that's a very interesting rumor. Yeah, I I am curious to see how it plays out. I know that uh, at least for for the other theme park that does a, a Halloween thing that's not Six Flags, um, they they uh they were they were talking about you know doing I think Wednesday through Sunday and. You know, then that kind of didn't happen, and then it came out. Oh, we're gonna do a, a week earlier. Well, they just then, pushed it back, uh, yeah. and then they pushed it back, and they scrubbed all every all their social media saying, "Oh, this is the original opening date." Man, yeah. So I, I, I had heard about that because they were gonna start, I believe, like the fourteenth, right? Yeah, it was something something crazy. I think we were gonna do like seven seven or eight weeks of haunt. It was. Let's see. And now they're going back to their original, like the twenty. It was. It was supposed to start, yeah, September fourteenth, and now it's going to start the twenty first. Well, I know with a company like Knotts, don't get me wrong, I love Knotts. I, 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 okay, let me rephrase that. I love Knotts Scary Farm. 
Um, I just went to Knott's recently. No disrespect to Knott's. I'm just too tall for all your rides, and I just don't feel comfortable getting on them because I'm too tall. So, but no disrespect to you. You guys have a great park and, and everything. Um, I will say certain policies killed the vibe last year, big time. Um, I, oh, that's why Universal was sold out every single night. Yeah, for real. Uh, for real. How many, how many times did it not sell out this year? Like once or twice, maybe. Oh, I, w- I wouldn't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> your picture doesn't say it all, you know what I mean? I'm just I know, but listen, I I will say this about knots about the chaperone policy, and and this is how I looked at it at a guest point. Now you look at it as as a monster point of view of how you know it was kind of a little slow, so it kind of made it not difficult, but at times it would just be a little bit boring. You know what I mean? It's like okay, we got to stay active, we got to kind of interact with one another, but we're getting very little flow of people coming through, so we got to at this point just entertain ourselves. Um, which has always been the motto. If you can't scare them, make them laugh. If you can't make them laugh, then entertain yourself. Um, yeah. So for me as a guest and as, as someone who comes and films and stuff, it was nice maze-wise when I was doing my walkthroughs because the flow for once wasn't like I was being rushed. I had time to actually get shots, get up close to certain characters, get up so close to certain things that I never had the opportunity to do before. Um Whereas if you go on a busy opening night, you're conga lining through shit and like people are stopping. So then you stop and it kind of sucks for the POV at that point. But I was conga lining, kind of taking, I was taking my time going through the mazes, getting details I never got to film before and just overall going and having a good time and enjoying things. Uh, Same thing with the scare zones. It was a, it was kind of a way like, and you know how I am. I don't, I don't go up to you guys and be like, Hey, do this for me. Like I'm kind of the guy that just stands off to the side and, if you guys Imagine see me, in front of my eyes, it happens in front of my eyes. Yeah, if you guys see me, it's cool. Like, but I, I kind of try to stay, like, not visible. That way, like, I can get kind of real authentic footage from you guys. That way, it's not like, oh, I'm putting on a show before the camera. Which you're not one of those people. Um, I know there is, and there's a few people that I've been to, not just knots, but just haunts in general, where they see a camera and they just like, oh, I'm gonna put on a show. It's like, nah, dude, I want that authentic, real shit because that's what for me, that's what's like. That's what makes these haunts the haunts. Like, if you can't see me with my camera and I get you getting one of the fucking best scares you've ever gotten, like, mm-hmm. that's authentic. Like, that was not planned. Like, I just decided to point and shoot because you're one of my favorite characters and you happen to just get that scare. And there's been, I've had, I'll be honest, I've had a lot of those moments, like, where it was just, you know, I get to do that. The fun part about filming in the zones was there was very little people so I can get more details and get up close and personal with certain characters that I liked without a whole crowd surrounding people. The mm-hmm. downside about it is, like I said, those scares are what make those compilations the best. And the fact that there was very little foot traffic going through, there was very little scares to be accomplished. So it was a little bit difficult at times to film stuff. Now, as I went on later to, you know, later in the in the season, um, it got a little bit better crowd wise in the zones. Um, so it was definitely. It's definitely interesting to see how they did things, uh, and I'm curious to see how they go about for the fiftieth. Yeah, I'm. I. I'll say this about the chaperone policy: I didn't think that it was smart, only because I remember when I was a guest. Like I, w- you know, I was I was once. Fi- I think we were you and I were both once fifteen, you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and you know, for me going to these haunts. You know, that was, it was fun. And it was, it was like, I always went with my parents. I was never like a a bad kid, but like there were times where it was like, Hey, you want to go through a maze? You want to go walk around by yourself? Go ahead, do it. Cool. And like, I was respectable. I was, I wasn't a, you know, a jerk or anything. You and I were the fans. We, we fucking looked up to these guys. You know what I mean? It was like, you know, it was fun. I, and I think that like one of the hardest parts of like scaring to to such a diminished crowd was that like the energy just wasn't there like and it was it was really weird like the the waves that we would get would they were so strange like rope drop some nights it would be super packed other nights it was so sparse and then like usually you know the crowd kind of turns right around like 11 or midnight right that's when that's when people kind of start you know they've been there for a few hours now they had monsters in their face they've been scared you know been getting scared for the past four or five hours so at that point that's when they're kind of like all right like i've had enough of the scary 
let's just have a good time here. Like, let's have fun. This year, like that turn was happening at like eight or nine o'clock at night. And it was just like, dude, like, <laughs> what, what, what happened? <laughs> like we were having a good time and you guys are already over it and they were already over it because they came and they did everything. And not only that, but some of them waited ew. so fucking long for Grimoire and Bloodline. And they were just fed up after waiting in those lines because it was like two yeah. hours for fucking Bloodline, fucking another two hours for Grimoire. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Those lines were looking like universal lines. Exactly. And I'm like, I'm not waiting. <laughs> I, I went in Bloodline, I think, twice. And I did it like right. I either did it when I got the buffet or I did it right mm -hmm. when it opened. And that was that was the hack this year. It was do the buffet straight to bloodline. Bloodline, yeah. But if you if you got there right when it opened, everyone was focusing on bloodline, which meant the other three mazes back there were fucking deadline. So I I took advantage of that. Dude, my my off night, I did rope drop and I ran straight to Grimoire because I did not want to have to deal with the bloodlines line. I like I Grimoire was the one that I wanted to see, and I knew that everyone was going to go straight to bloodlines because that was supposed to be the new infected. And like I, I, I think Ash and I were literally the first ones in line. It, for, it's for... just one of those things where, um, you know, it's 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 just like, I don't know. I I I have a lot of high hopes going to the fiftieth, so I we'll see what happens, man. I mean, hey, you and me both, man. I know. I I hope they'll have me back. <laughs> I hope so too, because I'm you know. Speaking of knots, before we move on, because I, I got some other universal news that you'll be interested in too. But speaking of knots, man, uh, shout out to uh, Jeremy J. Lee. Uh, his studio is making bust now of some of the iconic knots oh. characters, Scary Farm characters, and the first one he's doing is the Green Goblin. I um, saw that. It came out pretty cool. I have his decayed one right here, actually. I think I was only one of like fucking ten people that bought it. The skull. Yeah. This is the fucking decayed one right here. This one, this is a beauty right here. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, so you know, I, I saw his little, the goblin. Uh, I saw him post it today. It looks and then I saw, saw Dieterman repost it. And I went, yeah, that, that's a classic haunt monster right there. <laughs> that for sure is. If he's going to start doing more of these statues, which it seems like he's going to, um, I'm going to be dropping a lot of fucking money and regretting it. Is do you know, is he doing them in, in ZBrush? Uh, I don't know how he's doing them. I know he's hand painting them. He hand painted all of the, like these ones right here. Like all this shit is hand painted. It's all. Is the, painted. is, is the goblin resin or is it, uh, did he, did he 3d print that? I think it's resin. I, I know in the post that he put know, up that, he I know the skull it. was, was resin. The skull. I know that that one's resin. Yeah, I think it's resin, but he's going on a because the problems he had with the decayed thing was was this thing right here. Uh, it was like a like a three D printed kind of thing, and for okay. some people, this thing just completely bent and collapsed. Luckily for me, uh, and I'm knocking on wood because it hasn't yet. Mine hasn't, um, but I also keep mine in one fucking place and I don't touch it really too much. So, yeah, but. He is uh he's doing more of these and I'm super stoked for it. Um and I'm gonna support him because he's my boy, so but uh yeah. right. a lot of cool stuff. Let's talk about this next these next uh I got two rumors and a confirmation. Which one do you want to hear first? I want the rumors. All right. So the two rumors we have for mazes this year. Number one, Horrors of Blumhouse, uh Insidious and Megan. Now, Insidious? they're making a new Insidious movie this year. It's supposed to come out this year. So I'm okay. thinking that's going to be the Insidious movie that they're going to base it off of. Okay. And with Megan's popularity, now's the time to take advantage of that. Oh, you, well, I mean, you and I, we talked about this on, on last episode. I, I think Megan's a, a shoe-in for, for, for a Black House movie. Yeah. And we already got one confirmed maze. They're doing the Chucky TV show. So that's already been confirmed. They confirmed that shit on Halloween last year. I was like, are you guys fucking nuts? Yeah. Can I get by this Halloween before we even talk about next Halloween? I'm curious if they if they knew that that was going to get leaked and they that was simply a no, nope, we're just going to put it out there cuz we don't have we don't Yeah, we we don't want we don't want to deal with the uh unless it was a contract nope. for sci-fi because the show was on at the time. Oh, that could that yeah. That makes that makes sense too. It was like more promotion for the show. It's like, "Oh, fuck, they're doing another season and they're going to fucking do a maze. That's awesome." That make that actually makes a lot more sense. And the second rumored maze 
is a universal monsters maze entitled Dracula versus the Phantom of the Opera. Ah, uh, can we just get rid of Dracula? I like I I just want a Phantom. If if you're going to do Phantom, just make it Phantom. I feel like Dracula has been in almost all of them except Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yeah. I mean, he had a, he had somewhat a role in Bride of Frankenstein Lives, but it was his brides. Yeah. But I don't I don't know that. I think so far, in my opinion, Bride of Frankenstein Lives is the best Universal Monsters maze they've ever done. That was the one from... Uh, 2021. 2021, yeah. That one was good. Um, Man, like... You know what would be fun? As a, a Phantom and Invisible Man. Yeah. That one would be fun. The effect they did or, the first year the, for Universal Monsters of the Invisible Man was so fucking good. If... Yeah. What, what, what year was that? Was that 2018? 20... Yeah, that was Universal Monsters. Um, that was just Universal Monsters, and then the one scene he had in there was a hallway of him kind of saying his famous quotes from the movie. But they put a uh, black light effect on him, and it kind of made him look like Hugh Hefner. And they put a black uh, cloak over the guy's face, and then they wrapped that in like the the white. The bit. So like when the yeah. black light hit it, it kind of looked like he was really invisible because they had a black mm-hmm. background and everything. So it was cool. That's cool. Yeah. So I think it's. You know what would be a good standalone one is a uh, creature. Creature would be a good one. We've all been waiting for creature. Trust me, you're not alone on that. We've been wanting creature since like after they did Universal Monsters. We're like, where the fuck's the creature at? Yeah, we got discount creature at Knotts. It's called the Depths. <laughs> yeah, I like the Depths too. Um, so I'm excited. You know, yeah, I I do agree with you with the Dracula. Let's let's give him a year off, maybe. Um, Let's and, not make him the new Michael Myers. Yeah, let's fucking let's give Phantom like its own solo maze. I think Phantom can do perfect with its own solo maze, especially. If I think you, I think that Phantom would do amazing, especially if you utilize, you know, the the great music that's already. Well, we're gonna utilize the original 1920s film, which was a silent yeah. film at the time. Um, and if you do add like a slash score to it of his inspiration of the Phantom of the Opera, what he thought it would sound like. You know, and then kind of to essentially what I've always seen these mazes doing is essentially rebooting these characters to make them a little bit more scarier. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you could do that with the Phantom. Like, the Phantom... You, you, the, I don't know why, but like the, the Invisible Man that just came out like a few years ago, you could do that, have it do Phantom. That's your great way of your modern retelling of, of Phantom. Yeah. And, you know, you're, you're already intro- you're reintroducing the Invisible Man who was kind of a... Yeah, that was a that was a reboot, soft reboot. There, there right. And then you you come in, you have have the boy figure remix some uh some some sounds from the musical. A one, you got you got your maze of the year right there. You you got your next weekend. Funny story about figure. If I can uh, bring this up real quick, I actually last year in the beginning of the year was talking with him. I remember. Are you are you were telling me about that? Supposed to do a podcast now. My boy just got busy, and I don't blame him. Homie is dropping albums like crazy, going on tour, you know. And I was trying to get a hold of him. Hopefully, one day we can do a podcast because Figure is literally one of the only EDM artists that I listen to, um, and that's due to Horror Nights. And I had so many ideas that he was legit down to do. Like I wanted to do. Not only did I want to do a podcast with him, but I kind of was trying to lock him down for like two other videos. Like, hey, would you be down to like react to some of your mazes that had your music in it at Horror Nights on YouTube and shit? He's like, oh, dude, that sounds like fun. We could do that. And I was like, hell yeah. But um, yeah. he seemed like a pretty nice guy, like pretty cool guy. Uh, he's he's really a big. I mean, if his music didn't tell you already, he's really a massive horror fan. And when I say horror fan, like he knows deep cut shit. Like only the diehard fans, like the shit you find on Shutter and like the deep, you know, like. <laughs> In the Crypt fucking, TV. Yeah, Crypt TV. You know, like, he's a big-time horror fan. So I hope one day that figure, um, uh, when he's not, you know, super busy, we can schedule something because I would still love to do something with figure. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, there was just one night I was just playing Call of Duty with, with everyone, and fucking he just kept DMing me. I'm like, I gotta, I don't give a fuck if I die. I got to text figure, bro. <laughs> like, I got to fucking give him my full attention. Um, But... It, you know, I, I hope one day we get to do something. Um, yeah, but that would be so, so legit. <laughs> yeah, it would be a lot of fun. Um, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. So, yeah, man, I'm I'm excited. So, you know, that's those are the two rumored right now. Um, 
uh, from what I'm hearing in the rumor mill, um, we should start getting a lot more people starting to speculate pretty soon. Um, what's, the, so, what's the confirmation? The confirmation is that Universal Studios Hollywood has started construction for Halloween Horror Nights this year. I saw that. I saw uh, actually our someone that we mentioned earlier, Green Clown, saw him yeah. he, he post a little something something. I know. I don't know what the something something is. He likes to throw people off guard big time. So, <laughs> um, it's it's interesting because okay, so like as someone who goes out to that park and and gets construction updates it makes it a little bit more difficult now to get where they're filming because the, where they started construction, we got confirmation the Curious George uh, area is returning. Um, mm. Not my favorite area, but it is what it is. That's where uh, uh, Halloween and Scarecrow were last year. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the sucky part about that is if you pay attention to the parking structure above, that's where we used to peek over to get all of our footage for that area. Well, mm -hmm. this year, John Murray decided like towards the end of fucking – like when they were almost done with construction, he decided to cover every level of that parking garage. So you can't look in between anymore. And yeah. I'm like, Murdy, you did <laughs> not just do that. And he got on Twitter like, yeah, I just did that. I'm just like, I did that. Murdy. <laughs> You're like, please, my livelihood. <laughs> Murdy. Like, dog, I thought we were cool. Like, he probably doesn't even know who I am, but still, like, like <laughs> I thought we were yeah. good, bro. Like, you are. You, you got a press pass. I, 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 I don't know. I don't like to brag about that because, like, I don't look I'll at it as on. I don't look at it as like <laughs> something that, like, oh, I fucking got it. Like, that was something that I had wanted for five years, and I was like, I'm gonna make it my goal one day to get it. I, th I mean, the way I look at it for you is like that was something that, like you said, like that was something that you you set out to accomplish, and you did, and like you made it, and like. To me that that like it justified all the passion and hard work that you've poured into this this channel finally coming to fruition and being recognized as you know one of the the most reliable and like just amazing like YouTube channels that is dedicated to you know horror, horror Halloween horror nights and, and nights of horror you know I'm crying. You are. like like. You made it, right? Like that's that's literally your look. Hey, look, ma, I made it. That's literally that's that's your mom. moment. That's literally what I texted her that day when I got that pass. I'm like, I fucking made it. Hope yeah. I'm proud. You you did it. <laughs> you're like, you're up you're up there with the big boys. I you know for me it was just like I I and I've said it millions of times since then. I was like, if I never get it again, I will not be mad one bit because. Hey, they they brought this dream of mine that when I set out to accomplish when I first started, they brought that to life. And I can never repay Universal for that. And that's why Universal has always been one of my favorite theme parks. Um, so they 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 really made this little kid's dream come to life. You know, it's like that's when my inner kid came out because I was like, fuck, dude. Like, I've been going to this event since 2011. I started mm -hmm. this channel in 2017, started covering this event my first year of the channel, and then kept going every year since. Five years later, on our fifth anniversary, which meant more to me than anything, like we really did big things for five years, and it was a lot of fun. We got you know invited to so many places, but that right there for me was like, shit, dude. Like If I wanted to tomorrow, I can end Nights of Horror, and I would be satisfied with the work that I did. That's how it felt in that moment. I was like, tomorrow I can end this stuff and I would be completely satisfied because I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and I feel good to kind of just leave it there. But, you know. Hey, man. There's a Keep part going. of me that looked at that and like, oh boy, we're just getting started. It, it's true. We're just getting started, man. We, we're going to keep going. We got to keep making content. We're going to keep releasing podcasts. We're going to keep trying to get the best of the best on the show. We're going to keep trying to give you guys the absolute best coverage. And most importantly, we're going to be 100% real with everything we go into. Always. You Always. have to be. I mean, I'm going to give you the most honest opinions about things. I'm going to give you uh, – I, I, I even admitted when I was wrong last year when I went through the weekend the first time and I actually enjoyed it. Um, did I enjoy it by the end of the season? Probably not because I was tired of hearing the same six songs in line over and over again. <laughs> but that's just me. That's my only pet peeve with it. The maze itself was amazing, but the, the line cue, not the best. So I have I have one speculation for – for horror nights, and I, I don't remember if I told you. Did I tell you my what my speculation was last last time we talked about it? 
No, but the audience doesn't know, so you can tell the audience. Um, I have a feeling that, you know, the Universal last year, they they delved back into some of their their classics in, in terms of uh, bringing, bringing La Llorona back. Yes. I think that, you know, that they're... That they're gonna bring bring another very popular scare zone back. Um, I believe it was scare zone one. Um, had to do with uh, some humans being being uh, you know e- exterminated. Exterminators. I have a feeling that exterminators will return in some way, shape, or form. Because of the success of the Bugs Maze at Universal Orlando last year, or what? I just I don't know. I I feel that 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 was a very popular. Oh, popular scare zone i think that you know it's halloween hollow it's funny because uh mazes and and scare zones there it's all a cycle right so like one one year zombies can be super super popular and they'll have a good you know three four year run where it's just nothing but zombies all right cool once the zombie thing is done it's vampires right all right cool vampire 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 all right once vampires is done werewolves all right werewolves 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 so like it's it's all a cycle and i feel that what was exterminators was 2017 i think so right? so around then so yeah. you know it's, it's been a good five or six years it's not quite the uh the what was it 10 that we had with with uh la Llorona? yeah 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 it was around 10 years because so, yeah 2022 the last time we got la Llorona was 2012 so yeah it's been 10 years well, so i i have a feeling that you know not not to say that Universal isn't like unoriginal in terms of their ideas, but like when they have a good idea, they know that it's a good idea and they like to bring it back. Well, you know, if if I can just kind of like, like end it on this right here, the thing that I found that works so well for Orlando is the, the fine balance between originals and IPs. Like uh-huh. in Orlando, they do so many great original mazes that it's like when I went for the, for the 30th anniversary, I was blown away by the originals. The originals were some of the funnest and best mazes I went through. Um, one of my favorite mazes from that year, and it's not a lot of people's favorites, but I love it because it was like that detective style uh, mystery, murder mystery that meets like horror and stuff. Was um, um, I forget what it was, I think it was called like uh, what was it called? Oh, was shit. it the, the fishing one? No, it's like it was like unsolved mysteries unsolved or something like. I don't remember. It was an original maze. It was, I think, one of the, it was in the Strike Building. One huh? What was the cemetery one called? Was it like it was like the crypt or something? Oh, uh, you're thinking of uh, Graveyard Games. Yeah, that was a good interactive maze. They need to do more of that. But this one, okay. So like the thing about Universal Orlando's originals is they try to base a lot of their um, originals based around things you see in the park. Hmm. What was cool about this detective maze was there's actually a detective uh, window inside the New York Street area where it's supposed to be the detective they based this maze off of. Now, I guess this, okay. he's been here uh, throughout the years, um, and he's made returns or nods and cameos and stuff. So it like that's the cool thing about the originals. Their originals have their own kind of universe and their own stories, which I like. Um, mm-hmm. What was cool about this one is – you're going on a lot of his famous stories. He's supposed to be like it's supposed to. You're supposed to be reading his journal, and you're supposed to be okay. reading all the cases and shit that he went on. When you first enter the maze, there's this kid in this attic, and he's going through all of his old journals and he's reading them. And you hear like the narration in the background. And as you go through the maze, you go through a bunch of different scenarios and whatnot. One of the coolest things that I saw was in during the daytime operations. My friends took me over to an area. And they're like, okay, you see this building right here. You just see the facade of it. He goes, when you go into the maze tonight, you will actually go inside of this building, which ends up being a nightclub. And I was like, that's fucking cool. So, like, seeing that and then going inside the maze and then going inside that building, I was like, fuck, they do take things around the fucking park and make it, like, like this is cool. Like, I yeah. like when they tie the, the story of the park to the story of the haunt, you know, so. Like, it was just a cool maze. Like, the creatures look cool. Like, the stories were interesting. Like, it, it was really cool, and I'd love to see more of that character come back um, for a future haunt, uh, you know, like... Uh, I feel like they could, too, if he was a detective. Yeah, they could do more storylines and shit. Sure. Not, not to, you know, to, to go back to Batman, but, like, it's yeah. kind of what what the Batman, you know... More version of Batman. Batman uses. Yeah. 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 He's, the, he's the Batman. <laughs> yeah. He's the Batman. Horror Knight's Batman. 
Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. So like, I like more interactive and and kind of storytelling mazes like that. That's what I miss, and I think that's what Knots accomplishes so well with a lot of their mazes. They tell a good story, um, whether you get it the first time or not. Like it took me, it took me like every time that I went through Grimoire, I was seeing new things that I hadn't seen before, and it took me a while to kind of get the the overall gist of the story of that. And a lot of people still don't even understand it. I'm like. It's real simple. They found the witch's book in the 80s. They opened the book and reactivated an evil that hadn't been opened in years. And now with that book, they're showing you what where that book has been throughout the years and what kind of evil it's brought onto the world. Um, mm-hmm. And that was so good because they did something that I've been preaching and wanting to see for a maze for so long, and they essentially did a fucking Twilight Zone maze in black and white. Yeah. That was beautiful. Really beautiful how you transition from color to black and white with that laser effect and everything fucking Mm -hmm. gorgeous that maze i praise the fuck out of that maze so good that's why one maze of the year yeah and not to mention the guy who was managing it i was gonna i was kind of literally about to say it was a good good maze good talent good lead i i think i think what uh dieterman was saying that like 70 or 70 to 90 or 90 percent of of the talent in that maze was like brand new to oh yeah he was he gave him the opportunity to kind of just figure out their characters you know what i mean he's like you're not going to get it right away but figure out what works for you and figure and just play with your room have fun with it yeah and i was like that's cool i'm like i'm glad they had a good time and had a good like haunt experience i was like and and i'm glad that vincent didn't get pulled to have to work this maze it's, hey i it almost happened <laughs> did, you, did you really almost get pulled this year uh yeah but well Kind of, I kind of did, kind of didn't. Um, Knott's may or may not have offered an extra night off due to, uh, oh, yeah, that was going sorry. around, that was going across the board for everyone, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it wasn't just me. I did, uh, I did, uh, when Pops was the lead for, uh, Bloodlines, Bloodlines was short staffed, um, for quite some time when they first opened, right? Um, so like him and I had talked about it and I, I did tell him, I was like, Hey, well, like if you ever need someone, like I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. And I'll go back for one night because I like you. You're my friend and it would be fun. But I, I did, a uh... yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it, leave it at that. Leave it at that. <laughs> leave it at that. Just, let's just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> Overall, I think we're gonna we're in we're in for maybe uh, uh, another interesting haunt season. Um, oh, definitely, and it's already started. Stuff. Halloween is like next week. Yeah, bro. no shit. <laughs> I, I, Trans, Trans World, Trans World already happened. It's already dude. Trans World, yeah, that looked like I gotta see uh, how uh, Rib Effects did, man. That's uh, Dieterman's cousin right there, man. So we're always talking back and forth and shit. So um, he's a cool guy, uh, and I like the work that he's doing. Uh, I know John dude, Cook was from every really single year. Good. Came in the shop, I think, yesterday. He, picked, he was picking Mike. Up. No, uh, Dieterman. Oh, Dieterman. Yeah, he came in the other day. Oh, I think he's uh, he's working on trying to get his mask rehauled at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He went he went to the boy Chewy. Because I know his mask was a little uh, like because it's kind of old. It's an old mask, so he wanted to get it fixed up and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, man, I'm excited, man. I mean, there's a lot of good things coming. Some new uh, new new endeavors coming for for everyone and stuff so i'm excited man it's gonna be a good year excited. We're, we're approaching that season where we just got the, past rumor, the, rumor, the rumor mill starts running again and yeah. creepy con had another successful year man i mean i got to meet fucking opie i saw that how year. was that this year? oh it was fucking crowded but i mean that's good compared to last year i mean everyone was saying that the, in the morning they had some issues with the line but i got oh. there pretty late so i walked right in um but it was a fun time, dude. I mean, there was a uh, there was a lot of celebrities there, a lot of people that I've either seen in movies or just looked up to, and I'm like, the entire cast of Scream was there, right? Not entirely. It was just Jamie Kennedy, uh, uh, Jamie Kennedy, uh, Matthew Lillard, and Billy Loomis, and then um, uh, Lee Wydell, who was the stuntman for Ghostface in Scream One and Two. Yeah. So it was just them four. Um, the one that had the best reunion for Scream was last year at Monster Palooza. Like Nev mm-hmm. Campbell was there, um, Jamie Kennedy was there, Matthew Lillard was there. I think the only people that weren't there were Courtney Cox and uh, what's his name, uh, 
Um, Arquette? Yeah, David Arquette. Like, but every, like, Nev Campbell, dude, that's the star of the goddamn film. Like, yeah. That's the big one right there that everyone wanted to meet. So uh, the next one comes out next, like next month or something, yeah, I, right? I already got my tickets for it. Me and my girlfriend to go see it. Um, uh, I haven't seen five yet, and I'm I I, had I haven't seen five it. because I think five came out like right in the midst of haunt season, and I think it was like no five came out in like fucking January or February of like twenty one. No. Really? Or twenty two? Yeah, it was like last. It was like in the beginning of last year. Was it really? Yeah, it was. I, it was in the beginning of the year. I remember that much. Because I remember. Yeah, being, January fourteenth. Yeah, I remember being so stoked to see Ghostface back I, on screen again. What was I doing? Probably working or busy. Maybe yeah, I, I, I honestly, I swear that that came out like <laughs> in hot. Maybe like someone in, told you about it during hot You're like, yeah, I should watch that, and you just never got around to doing it. It's possible. I just. I wasn't a big fan of the fifth one. Like I didn't. It what I've heard I don't know. reviews. I just have one. There's just everyone that I've talked to knows my biggest issue with this fucking film, and it's a scene. It's a killing scene, and it's not a matter of the kill and who they killed. It's a matter of the person that did the killing. And I was like, no fucking way, no, just not buying that. Just not going to buy that at all. Just interesting. No, not gonna buy it. You can't sell me on that. I I have to watch it. And I yeah. you have to find where it's being shown. I, you'll know the scene because it's not a scene you you're not gonna miss this scene. Like it is a very crucial scene in this. Movie. Like it's, and I'm gonna be watching it and just be like, oh okay, that like really, yeah. like is it? Is well, that kind of... you're gonna watch it, but then when you watch it a second time, because until you find out who the killer, you know the killer is, it's like yeah, you're gonna watch it a second time and be like, huh, or like. Yeah, it's gonna be like that was that's what happened to me. I was like, wait a second. Like when I watched it the second time, I was like, did that? No. What? <laughs> like, and it's not a good way either. I was like, no fucking way, bro. It's just not even possible. Um, so I'm excited to see because they're going to New York in this one, and there's a lot of rumors going around about this one. Some stakes have changed in this one. Interesting see what happens. So interesting. Well, a near two hour episode of shoot the shit, man. It's been a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanna I feel like we covered a lot. <laughs> we covered a lot. We did talk a lot. And that's the whole point of shoot the shit, is just to have fun. But I wanna thank uh you for being co host for this episode as well. Uh uh Thanks for having me. And we sent our best out to AJ. He just is going through some personal stuff at the moment. So uh he asked that he asked us to do the show uh without him. So we're hoping for the next episode. I just dropped my phone and hit my fucking <laughs> We're hoping for the next episode we can get AJ back on um, because I feel like shooting the shit would get his mind off things too. So um, I want to give a special shout out to my boo bros. You know who you are. Um, uh, A special good shout out to my buddy Exploring Attractions. Uh, You know exactly who you are. And uh, yeah. With all that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you guys want to follow us any step further, hit us up on Instagram at the Knights of Four. And on TikTok at the Knights of Horror. And then on Twitter at Knights of Horror. Uh, and then if you want to see us gaming like we're going to do, we're going to do right after this episode. But, you know, <laughs> it's already the past. So uh, Knights of Horror Gaming on Twitch. Check us out. We play uh, mostly Modern Warfare 2, but we've been playing a wide variety of things lately. We've been playing The Last of Us. Uh, we're going to start Hogwarts Legacy. we got a lot of other games coming out. I want to play the new Dead Space. So uh, we got some things coming pretty soon. So check us out. But always uh, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe button with that bell notification be where every time I put up a new video, uh, leave some comments down of your thoughts of any of the topics we talked about today. And we will see you guys uh, next time. I won't say next week because, you know, things might come up. <laughs> I'll say next time. We'll see you guys next, next time. time for another episode of Shoot the Shit.